Hello everybody, I'm Nick and Microsoft finally announced one of the massive things that they have been working behind the scenes and I knew about this for a while now. I actually dropped a hint for that in my podcast, but now .NET will be able to be run and C Sharp code will be able to be run very differently. It fundamentally changes how we write C Sharp code, how new developers will start writing C Sharp code and this is a massive bet on Microsoft's front in terms of where .NET is going. So in this video I'm going to show you what has been announced, what's the future and how will that affect you because Trust me, if you use things like LinkPad or maybe you run C Sharp on the console in some way or you have a, a very minimalistic C Sharp experience currently, well, that is changing. And not only that, you can start like this and turn whatever you're going to be building into a fully fledged project. So let me show what I have here. I have an empty VS Code folder. I have nothing else. As you can see, there is really nothing. It's just an empty folder. No project, no solution, no nothing. And I have installed, and I should let you know that I have installed the preview uh, C Sharp uh, dev kit as well as the preview C Sharp language extension because that is needed for what we're going to be showing here. Um, it's not needed to run what I'm going to show you, but it's needed if you want to have IntelliSense. So all I'm going to do first, I'm just going to create a file. I'm going to call it app.cs. Let's start with the most basic of C Sharp things, console.writeline. As you can see, I have IntelliSense on an empty C sharp file, nothing else, no project, no nothing. And I can say, hello world. So if I take that and I go to terminal and I say .NET run, nothing will happen because obviously I don't have a project, so it doesn't know what it's supposed to run. But if I say .NET run app.cs, then it's going to build the thing behind the scenes and run it. No CS project, no solution, no nothing. You can now just do .NET run on any C sharp file on your system and as long as you have .NET 10 preview 4 and always install I have preview 6 here you will be able to run C sharp which is really really cool this works on Mac of course I'm on a Mac here this works on Windows and it works on Linux as well I will show you how that is possible but yes it is not only that but you might be wondering what if I want to have a NuGet package so I write some more complex code well let's say we want to print a date and I know that Microsoft has shown like this demo as well if you watch that video it's not going to be different than that but it's a really cool way to showcase the feature so I'm going to say hello world from and then I can use a string interpolation to pass the date now if I just use that C sharp behind the scenes will use the two string method of the date but that is not really humanly readable so what if we want to have a humanly readable version of this. Well, there's a package called Humanizer, which is an excellent new package that allows us to have humanized things. One of those things is dates. So if, what if I want to say that this is four months ago? Well, I can say, and that's how you include a new good package in this, because yes, you can. You use the hash, and then you use the colon, and you say package, and then I'm going to specify the package name. So Humanizer. I'm going to say the version I want to use is any version 2.0 anything and the moment I do that I will need of course to say using dot humanizer and the experience here I'm gonna be honest is not that great this is very very new you will see that this does not exist but if I actually say dot need to run once behind the scenes that will do a new get package restore and if I go back here you will see this suddenly or in a second or two um, working so now I'm gonna say humanize which is a method that exists here you'll see it doesn't really still work but if i save it and i run it once again then as you're going to see hello world from four months ago and now intellisense and using works because now i'm requiring it now it will be restored now it will be used now the using can't be automatically added if this is missing and i haven't restored this initially then then you won't get a helpful intelligence thing but here it does understand at humanizer because i've already run it once and it's going to add it simple as that now you might be wondering is c sharp trying to be python and javascript with node yes it is microsoft is doing this because the biggest issue they have is an adoption issue there's two ways to become a c sharp developer nowadays the first one is to just want to do games and you start with Unity or Godot. Those are the two major ways that C-Sharp developers are coming in. The other one is you just happen to be hired in a company that is doing C-Sharp. That's how I became a C-Sharp developer. I had no intention to become one. I just happened to just get hired into the role. No one knew 
starts looking to be a C-sharp developer to do really anything because it's not as simple as all of those other things. And that's what Microsoft is trying to fix. It's trying to make the experience of getting started with C-sharp very, very easy and attractive. And by the way, Aspire is an effort to do that too, just to give you a more complete experience out of the box. Now, this is fine for an app, but what if I want to build an API, right? A small, minimal API. And everything, by the way, has been leading to this. So you might want to say builder, and because you know that this is how you do API. So you say web application dot create builder, and then you have your app. So you say builder dot build, and then you have your app dot run method. Now, if I move to that and I say dot net run api.cs this won't work and it's not going to work because web application does not exist now where is this coming from well actually it's coming from the sdk itself because you can actually change the sdk and the sdk behind the scenes implicitly adds a lot of nuke packages so how do you add an sdk again hash semicolon sdk and you specify microsoft dot net dot sdk dot web if you do that and you save and you go back and you run it then your API, as you can see, is running fine. And this has been implicitly added because behind the scenes, Microsoft is doing a lot of stuff to get this to work. And of course, you can curl that and get a response. Now, we don't really have uh, anything on the test endpoint. So let's go ahead and add it. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to stop my API and say app.map get. Here we go. And I'm going to say that the test endpoint should return hello world. Here we go. Well, not the best spelling in the world, but here you go. Run the API. It's going to start very quickly. And by the way, this is still very, very new. So performance will improve as we go. I'm going to say back to your parcel, curl to the test endpoint, and you get hello world back from the API. So now you have a fully fledged API just running very, very efficiently on the single file. You can just give that to someone, tell them run .NET, run api.cs and they have the api running no project no nothing this is what microsoft's i think master plan is for the future of dotnet and hopefully get more people to adopt it because now it's going to look very very cool you will always have these people saying you're trying to be this you're trying to be that you're trying to be that every language is trying to be something that's not an argument enough for me c sharp has an adoption problem and I think that's a great way to fix it. The last thing I want to show is, okay, you have this API file here and I'm going to quickly stop it. And you want to start now moving things into a project. How do you do that? Well, you can, of course, create a new project, say API, move things around and all that. But that takes time. Well, I'm going to say .NET project convert API.cs. If I do that, as you can see now, a new folder has been created. A CS project has been created with the appropriate things that you might need. And the API project is there. It even used the appropriate SDK that I created on this API.cs file. I can do the same with the app, by the way. And in this case, I have a NuGet package. This will also work. It is going to add the NuGet package there. And it's going to choose the default project SDK, executable type, and all that. All that for me. So it takes you from a single file to this more complete experience. Overall, I think this is a massive net positive for .NET and it's a step in the right direction. It's more of a step in the right direction, in my opinion, than Aspire or any of the AI stuff. But that's maybe a discussion for a separate talk. This is what Microsoft should be focusing on. Many people hate it. Many people think oh, we're simplifying the language so we're not going to get as good developers. Well, let's get some developers. And then we're going to worry about whether we're going to get them to be good ones or not. It's all about the path and the experience. And if you don't like this as a C-sharp developer, then you're really damaging yourself and your potential to get hired jobs and get hired in more C-sharp roles. Because at the end of the day, you might end up doing something like, oh, there's not enough C-sharp jobs. I'm going to go and use TypeScript, which, by the way, will launch a brand new seven-hour course on how to learn TypeScript on Dom Train with code TypeScript. And you get 20% off. Link in the description down below. But... That's all I had to cover here. Microsoft is still working on this, so please give feedback. They will watch this video, of course. So leave your comments down below, letting them know what you think about this and what else do you think they should add because there's so, so much coming for this. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.